In this video, we are going to go over how to tag a game. If you need assistance connecting to the tagging page, you can watch the connecting to the tagging page video. When you first open the tagging page, the top option will display a large box labeled game tagging. Before you start the game, you will want to verify in the top left hand corner of this box that it displays the correct field name. When you select game tagging, it will take you to the new page. In this page, you will have options for upcoming games. As you can see, there are none currently. If you see the correct game, what you can do is you can go ahead and select this game and continue the game tagging process. If you are unable to see the game you are looking for, you can select create game in the top right hand corner. You then have the option between official and a private game. Official games are games that are scheduled against opponents and are okay to be distributed. Private games are games that will not be distributed, an example being inner squads or a live batting practice. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use an official game. In the bottom left hand corner of this little page, you can see I have checked that this game doesn't appear in the schedule. In this case, I did not see the game I was looking for in the schedule. I'm going to go ahead and check this box and the next option will go ahead and display an orange color. In this next page, you will be able to see the game settings. You're going to have the organization, the level, the league, and the rule set. Setting the organization is a very important part of making sure that the CSV is delivered to the right people immediately after the game is submitted to TrackMan. If you do select a scheduled game, then you will want to verify that this organization is correct. If it is incorrect, please go back and create a new game. As you can see here, I have the options for this IP address. I have PBR. I'm going to go ahead and select that now. Next, you're going to go ahead and want to select the level that you are playing. This is the level that will, the game will be played under, an example being MLB, AA, or D1. This is based on the schedule service if it is a scheduled game. Again, if it isn't correct, please go back and create a new game. If you're unsure of the level, you will find an option that says undefined, as you can see here. Next, you're going to go ahead and want to select the league that you're in. This is the specific league that the game is played under, an example being American League, Southern League, NCAA. If you're unable to find the league you're looking for, what you can do is you can also select undefined. In this case, I'm going to use Prep Baseball Report. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and select the rule set. The American League includes a DH, while the National League does not include a DH. For this, I'm going to go ahead and use American League. Once you have set the organization, level, league, and rule set, create and set lineup will display an orange color. You could go ahead and click this or click back if you need to do some further editing. I'm going to go ahead and hit create and set lineup and move on to the lineups page. As you can see, you can see options for the away team and the home team. What you're going to want to go ahead and do is go ahead and go into the search bar and search the team you're looking for. In this case, I'm going to use draft A and draft B. And there's two options for adding a player to the lineup. What you can do is you can go into each one of these boxes and search for the player. I'll go ahead and do that now. If you do find a player is missing, what you can do is you can go to the roster tab and search for that player. And what you can do is you can press the, press the plus button on the right hand side to add that one player. You can also search at the top and find the player you're looking for. If you're unable to find the player on the roster page, what you can do is you can start play, typing in that player's name. As you can see, you will see an option that pops up that says no results. Would you like to add a missing player? In this case, I'm going to want to select yes. Here, you're going to have to add the first name, the last name, the jersey number, and the handiness of the player. I'm going to fill out this information now. You could then select add player or cancel. As you can see, right next to each player, there is a box. This box is for you to input the player's number. I'm going to go ahead and do this now. Next, what you can do is you can select the drop down and select the player's position. 
This is necessary for starting the tagging app. If you were to add two of the same positions, what you will see is you will see a red dot next to the lineup card. You will also see the positions highlighted in red. You will want to correct this before moving forward. The second way of adding players to a lineup is going to go ahead and go to the roster tab. When you go to the roster tab, you can select the plus button on the right hand side. This will go ahead and add nine players to the lineup. Once you hit nine players, you will not be able to add players further. Here you will also have to input the jersey numbers and the positions. If you added somebody to the incorrect spot in the lineup, what you can do is you can select the three lines, click and hold, and drag that player to the correct position. As you can see here, I'm able to move these players up and down in the lineup. Now I'm going to go ahead and add jersey numbers and positions. As you can see, the start tagging option in the bottom right hand corner now displays a orange color. If I were to have an issue with the roster, as you can see here, it does gray out and I will be unable to proceed until this is corrected. If you accidentally mix up the home and away teams, what you can do is you could go to the left hand corner and select the switch home and away option. This will flip the two rosters. As you can see, draft B was home and is now away and draft A was away and is now home. Once you have verified that your lineup is correct and you have inputted jersey numbers and positions, you could go ahead and hit start tagging. The tagging page will now open up. As you can see in the top left hand corner, start game option is still labeled green. You can see that the entire page is still grayed out. This is because the game has not been started. After selecting start game, it will automatically put you into warm up mode. As you can see, the page is still grayed out. Before starting the game, you will, will want to switch to playing. On the left hand side, you will see zero plays, and below that you will see waiting for pitcher. This is waiting for a pitch to register. And before we start going through the tagging process, we're going to go over the features in the tagging page. To the right of the plays, you will see the lineup section, as you can see here. In this section, you will be able to see the current pitcher as well as the current batting lineup. If you would like to make a change to the lineup, you can select the pencil in the top right hand corner located here. You will then see a window open for editing your home or away roster. I'm going to go ahead and edit draft B. As you can see, this will take you to a page similar to the lineup page. Here you'll have all the capabilities that you had previously in the lineup. Say I wanted to subtract a player, what I, what I could do is I could select this minus on the right hand side to remove him from the lineup. I then can go to the roster page, scroll down and add that player. I will have to enter a jersey number in a position. You can also add the player by searching for the player. You'll then also have to select the position and the jersey number. Once you have made all the changes you would like, you can select confirm. In order to make a quick substitution, you will have to have a pitch thrown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a play. As you can see, now on the left hand side, I, under lineup, I can make changes to the lineup. If I would like to make just a quick substitution, I can select the arrows going in both directions. When I select this, it will open it up an option where I can select that new player, or I can search for the player. All you have to do is select that player and the player will now be present. If you'd like to move this player in the lineup, you can select the three lines and drag them to the correct location. You can also do this for the live pitcher. Next, we're going to go over the metrics tab. This will be similar to the live dashboard where you can edit the tiles that are available. 
All you have to do is in the right hand side of metrics, there is going to be this filter button. You can select this and it will open options on the right hand side. You could switch between small, medium, and large icons. On the left hand side of this change data option, you will see boxes. If you check these boxes, it will add them to the metrics tab. I'm going to go ahead and add release height and max height. If I click away from this page, you will now see them in the bottom as you can see here. If I would like to move these up in the order that they are listed, I can select the three lines on the top right hand side and drag them to the top or drag them to the bottom. As you can see the changes were made on this page. You can also see that you can switch between imperial and metric. Imperial is going to be things like miles per hour and inches, while metric is going to be kilometers per hour and centimeters. Now we're going to go over tagging. Because the, because the page isn't playing, we can go ahead and go through this tagging process. I don't have live data coming in, but normally the data would automatically appear here. Since I already added a play, what you can see is the tagging portion of the page is asking what the pitch type was. Here you can use keystrokes or just select the pitch. It's going to take you through the path of tagging. So first, it's going to be the pitch type. Then it's going to be the call of the pitch. In this case, I'm going to select in play. I can select what type of ball was hit. I'm going to select line drive. And single. There were no outs on the play, so I will select no outs. And no runs. The tagging flow is now ended. You can select enter to save the tag. As you can see, after you save the tag, it will display something that says waiting for pitch in the top left hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and add another play because I do not have live data coming in. Going through the flow can be far faster. What you can do is you could go fastball in this case and select what kind of pitch it was. So if it was ball called, then all you have to select is ball called and no outs. If there were no outs on the play or no runs scored, what you can do is you can end the tagging process here. It will go ahead and save below. Because of this, it will automatically think that there was no outs and there were no runs scored. As you can see in the bottom left hand corner, I do see now that there is one ball, zero strikes, and zero outs. I can change these if an error was made by selecting the up and down arrow. In this bottom left hand corner, you can also see that it does display the score. I can also select the up and down arrow here. If you'd like to add a note to the pitch, all you have to do is select the pitch you'd like to add a note to, type in this text box below, and hit save tag. Once you select save tag, that note will be associated with this pitch, as you can see when selecting. I'm going to go ahead and add one more play. This is going to be a fastball that was in play. It was a line drive and a home run. There were two runners on base, and so that's going to go ahead and be three runs. Once I select three runs, I will hit enter. As you can see, three runs were added to that bottom left hand corner. I'm now going to go ahead and fast forward through adding three plays that all resulted in outs to show you the change of innings. As you can see, now that I do have three outs tagged, it will ask if you'd like to increase the inning. You're going to want to select yes. Once the next pitch comes in, the lineups will flip. You can also see that I'm now located in the bottom of the first. You're going to go ahead and continue through this tagging process, and when you're finished, you can select from warm up to playing. You will want to select warm up whenever you're not in a live game, so something that's not going to attribute to strikes, balls, or outs. Okay, now that we're ready to end the game, we can switch from playing to warm up, and you will see this end game option. It will now ask if you'd like to end the game. If you end the game, you will not be able to resume it you will be asked to review the game afterwards. We're going to go ahead and move on to that review page. As you can see here, it does display all of the information for each pitch. 
On, over here, you will see the data that was recorded. You can see the play result, the balls, the strikes, the inning, the batter, the catcher, and the pitcher. You will see the notes you listed right here, and they can be edited and resolved. If you resolve them, that note will go away. Therefore, the pitch will go from an error status to an OK status. If you accidentally resolve a note before you meant to, then you can select the drop down and remove it from resolved to not resolved. In this case, I am going to select resolved. As you can see, the error will go away. Now I see one more error. This is an error I caused at the end of the game. I moved the inning back up to the first inning. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to go back over to this section here and change it to the first from the first inning to the bottom of the first. As you can see, this will create more errors. You will have to adjust this as needed. You can add a pitch before, a pitch after, and edit the play. If you select the drop down next to the error, it will tell you why the error was created. You could go off this and create edits as needed. One by one, we're going to go through each one of these errors. The first error being the inning was decreased. As you can see, a couple more errors occurred. I'm going to continue to go down the list. So the pitcher and the batter are the same. In order to change the pitcher, all I have to do is select the three lines. I'm going to go ahead and select edit play. I could go ahead and do ball called and no outs. And then select edit play. As you can see, that one error now has been removed to eight errors. I can go ahead and now change the batter. Once I have found the player I'm looking for, I can select edit. And you can see the errors has gone down. You could go ahead and go through each one of these errors and make edits as needed. Once you have resolved all of the errors, what you can see in the top right hand corner is that the submit logo will display an orange color. If you did select save and complete later, you can return to the tagging page, go under the archives tab, and select review. Once you're finished reviewing, you can su select Submit. The game will be available for review for the next 24 hours. The games are distributed on the FTP site that your administrator has access to, and if they set up the CSV configurations, it will also be emailed. This will conclude the tutorial for tagging a game.